Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there's always a chore on the homestead. And I built a new watering system for the chickens. It's the little nipples hanging underneath there, and you can see him pecking on that there. Uh, it's just a bucket, and it's got a pipe that's connected into it. I'm uh, waiting on a gutter It's not here yet, and a funnel that's going to go in the top. That's going to take care of the watering system, so we won't have to go in yeah, during the spring, summer, and fall months anyway. Now another project I had was adding shore power with my tiny screwdriver and tiny hammer and a hole saw that wasn't big enough to go through a piece of five quarter. I had to chip out a hole. Uh, shore power is the same as like on a camper or something where you can plug it into an extension cord. Uh, we're planning on getting some of those panel heaters when the winter gets here. And the cracks in between the boards will all be filled in. I'm not sure if I'm going to insulate it or not. Maybe. Maybe not. Well, after finagling around here a little bit with my tiny screwdriver and tiny hammer, I was able to drop the plug right in there. Now this accepts an extension cord on the back side or the regular plug, and then you plug an extension cord on the outside. But I'm not hooking it up yet. One of the great things about building the coop this way is I can take off an individual board uh, to do maintenance or whatever on the inside, which I had to here. I had to replace their perch and it fallen down. And uh, looking through there, I can see the chicken cam hanging on the wall. I think I'm going to take it down. I know everybody loved it, but it's always getting beat on and knocked around, and it's a pain to charge and a pain to turn on, so it's probably going to go. So adding solar panels to the coop is something I've kind of been thinking about doing for a while. I didn't buy the brackets because they're kind of expensive. I just had these little L brackets and uh, thought I'd just go ahead and use some self-tapping screws. They didn't work that well, and I ended up having to find my drill bits, and I actually lost the main one that I was using. It's laying right there, you can see it, and it's right there. I looked for it for probably 15 minutes, and it was absolutely right in front of me. Now the basic process I used was just put a bracket about where it goes, like a quarter inch down, and I put the drill out there, did a little scratchy scratch, and that was my mark. Now, I'm going to tell you this, drilling holes in your solar panel voids warranties, and you're very likely to break something. I was lucky that I didn't break anything. Uh, it could have easily shattered everything. Uh, now, the glass and the cells are roughly three-eighths of an inch thick, and the frame is around an inch thick. So, right in the middle there, I was a little close to the glass, but it ended up being okay. And then I just take a one of those self-tapping screws that was kind of worthless, and I put it on the bracket. I let the bracket sort of hang a little bit here, you'll see. And then I just drive her home. That's really all there is to it. Now I only used one screw per mount, four mounts, and right there I just dropped my Phillips bit. It's the only one I had with me, so I was very happy that I was able to find the doggone thing, or I would have had to go all the way back to get another one. Well, I got her all bolted down to the roof. I just used the same self-tapping screws, and I screwed right through the rubber. I don't think it's going to leak. I suppose it will eventually, but it's not really a concern of mine right now. Well, we have an old porch light that we had kind of laying around. It's only about a year old. We kind of put it in place until we got our fancy ones that the wife wanted to put on the house. So I'm using it, and I decided to do a little trick by just loosening one top screw on this uh, stockade-style construction, and uh, kind of move it around to where there's enough room to get the cord in. Now this is an old cord off a grid tie inverter that doesn't work anymore, so I cut it, and it'll just plug directly into the inverter that's in there and the other side will just be wired directly to uh, the light itself now the benefit to using a plug-in like this instead of hardwiring everything with junction boxes and whatever uh, it's just super simple to remove odds are it's not going to stay there forever there's going to be some modifications really just wire nut it, tape it, and suck it back in and mount it, and that's that's really all there is to this. It's just like household current, only it comes from the sun, from a battery, and 
through an inverter, it makes it all probably noticed I didn't even use the mounting bracket that comes with uh, the light or any other kind of porch light or socket light that's designed to mount into a round box or a square box. All I'm doing right here is just taking some wood screws and just going straight through the mounting holes. Uh, it works fine and it'll hold it up there for as long as the screws last and as long as the light, which probably won't even be that long, is probably going to come down before the screws rot out. Well, right here I'm wiring up a uh, toggle switch. It's just a light switch, indoor kind, for any general single pole light in a house. I'm using it to turn the solar panel off and to turn it back on. The reason being is if I need to move the battery, which I will be swapping that battery out, uh, you don't want to have solar power energy going through your charge controller if there's no battery. So in order to do any maintenance on the battery itself, I need to be able to disconnect the solar from the charge controller. So instead of having to reach in there and get the little screw and uh, take the wire out, I just thought I'd put a little switch on here, uh, make it super simple, and uh, should make life a lot easier. So I actually had to shoot this scene three times. The chickens kept pecking on the camera. But there's the charge controller. It's mounted in, and now you can see what I mean by trying to get in there and disconnect the cable. Uh, I'll just mount this light switch right here. And this was pretty difficult. I did end up taking off one more board to have more swinging room, but that was after the fact. Uh, this was actually pretty difficult to do. The idea is that I can reach in through that last nesting box hole and turn the switch off and on. And that's actually how I access the inverter. The switch is on the bottom right of it. I didn't film putting the inverter in. I don't know why. And I didn't film wiring it up. But anyway, you get the idea. It's just a basic small solar setup. And uh, it looks like it's cool. Now the solar panel has those MC4 connectors that I despise. So I cut them off. And I'm just going to hardwire it in with wire nuts. This way it just seems easier and more convenient. I don't have to have extra connectors. I don't have to order connectors or worry if they're making contact or worry if they're loose or whatever. I just wire nut things in and tape it off. And uh, I know it's connected. I know it's working. I know there's not a uh, corrosion issue. Everything is in there nice and tight. and. It just works. Sometimes the simplest is the easiest. No, well, they're just gonna tuck underneath this other board that I've got loose. Kind of out of frame there. And uh, everything will be underneath and weather protected. And I can still get right to it if I need to. Now this is a deep cycle marine battery. And I'm kind of just using it now, maybe for the next couple nights, to make sure things are working fine. Uh, it's not going to stay here. I have other batteries in mind that I'm going to build a little box for and kind of make it more permanent. Now you can see the two lights are on on the charge controller, the green and the red. Now to the left of the green light, is the charging light. Now with that switch turned off, the solar panel isn't connected, so it's not charging. Until I reach in here, fumble around a little bit, find the switch, turn it on. There, the light's blinking now. That means it's charging. And for some silly reason, I turn it off before I close the thing. But anyway, it works. Sometimes simple projects like this are pretty rewarding. Just knowing that things work. It's pretty nice. 
Well, everybody, I appreciate you watching. Hope everybody's doing good with this COVID stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, have a good one.